I'm Madeline. I'm going to be your nurse today. So what brings you in? I've noticed lately I've been really tired and weak and I have a headache at times. Um, what actually brought me in though is I've noticed I've lost a lot of weight okay. and I have these brown spots on my hands oh, and yeah. in my creases and yeah. on my shoulders a little bit. I don't know what that's from. And I've also been craving really salty food all, all hours of the day. Okay. Well, I think the doctor should talk to you and run some tests, and then we'll follow up from there. Hi, Tamara. I am your doctor, and I have diagnosed you with Addison's disease. We are now going to talk about Addison's disease. Addison's disease is also called primary adrenal insufficiency. It is a relatively rare autoimmune disease. The primary cause of Addison's in Canada is an autoimmune response. However, in different regions of the world, tuberculosis can also be a cause of Addison's disease. You are at a greater risk if you have another autoimmune disorder. Addison's is a chronic metabolic disorder requiring lifetime hormone therapy replacement because the layers of the adrenal cortex are destroyed. First, we are going to talk about the normal anatomy of the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland sits on top of each kidney. The adrenal gland is made up of the adrenal cortex and the medulla. For Addison's, we are focusing on the adrenal cortex. It is made up of three layers. The zona glomerulosa, which is the outermost layer in pink, the zona fasciculata, which is the middle layer in green, and the zona reticularis, which is the innermost layer of the adrenal cortex, and that's in orange. The colors are just representative of the different layers. Normally, in the adrenal gland, the zona glomerulosa produces mineral corticoids, an important one being aldosterone. Aldosterone causes the reabsorption of sodium and the excretion of potassium. Aldosterone is regulated by this feedback loop. You will have increased potassium in the blood, which will signal the zona glomerulosa to stimulate increased secretion of aldosterone. This will target the kidneys, causing the kidneys to, to absorb sodium and water and excrete potassium. This process happens until the sodium-potassium levels normalize, and then the secretion of aldosterone turns off. This is an important key concept because it is part of our normal homeostasis. Also keep in mind that this isn't the only mechanism to stimulate aldosterone release. The renin-angiotensin mechanism also regulates the release of aldosterone. The next layer of the adrenal cortex is the zona fasciculata. This layer produces glucocorticoids, an important one being cortisol. Cortisol increases glucose metabolism in the body during stressful situations. This feedback loop shows the regulation of cortisol release. Stressors such as hypoglycemia, everyday stress, and trauma trigger the hypothalamus to secrete corticotropin releasing hormone, which triggers the anterior pituitary to secrete ACTH, which stimulates the zona fasciculata of the adrenal cortex to release cortisol, then targeting the tissues, causing glucose metabolism. After stressors end, an inhibitory effect occurs to turn off the secretion of CRH and ACTH. Keeping in mind our key concepts, Remember that cortisol is transported in the blood by transport proteins. The innermost layer of the adrenal cortex is the zona reticularis. It produces androgens, which cause secondary sex characteristics to develop in males and females. ACTH also causes androgens to be produced. In the pathophysiology of Addison's disease, each layer of the adrenal cortex is destroyed, represented by the X marks in each layer. Within each layer, starting with the loss of the zona glomerulosa, aldosterone begins to decrease. This causes a decrease in potassium excretion and an increase in sodium excretion, causing excess water loss. This results in a lower cardiac output and hypotension. Next, the destruction of the zona fasciculata causes a deficiency in the amount of cortisol release. This results in a decreased release of glucose for the body to use, resulting in symptoms such as fatigue, muscle weakness, weight loss, hypoglycemia, and poor response to stress. Lastly, without the zona reticularis layer, there is a deficiency in the release of androgens. This creates lack of secondary sex characteristics and loss of sex drive. Due to the lack of these hormones, there is no negative feedback loop turning off the secretion of ACTH. Therefore, ACTH levels rise, leading to the bronzing pigment we see in the skin in individuals with Addison's disease. Now for a summary. Normally, my adrenal glands produce hormones that are transported by proteins throughout the blood and my body's homeostasis is disrupted when I have Addison's disease because my adrenal cortex is destroyed. This means that hormones like aldosterone are not being produced causing me to lose sodium, 
followed by water across the cell membrane by osmosis. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why I've been craving salty foods. And I also have a deficiency of cortisol, which makes me tired because my body can't release glucose for me to use for energy. And I also have a deficiency in androgens. Mm -hmm. But on the bright side, I guess I don't have to shave my armpits. You got that exactly right, Tamara. And remember that this disease requires a lifetime hormone replacement therapy.